oh my gosh, this changes everything. It was one of those kind of wow moments for me. I was blown away. Stunned. Checked so many boxes of what we were missing. It's going to change the industry. Over the past few years, the enterprise browser emerged to become one of the hottest new technologies for enterprises. The enterprise browser is both inevitable and invaluable. I can't believe I can add that layer of control and create that end user experience. We started to go discuss it with some of the big CIOs and CISO thought leaders, and they kept saying the same phrase. Wow, you do that, that'll change everything. This can change everything. They're literally telling me our tagline. This can change everything. We're really talking about the future of work here. How to enable individuals to be more efficient, how to reduce the cost of the business, and finally the ability to build cybersecurity the way we always wanted it, right? By design. But what is an enterprise browser? And how did we get here? 95% of our work is being done in the browser. We were exploring many solutions, cloud workstations, remote desktops. Each solution was a really huge burden and was not scalable. 85 to 90% of our employees do work remote. It's critical that we protect that last mile. As the vast majority of applications move to the web, the one application not designed for the enterprise suddenly became the most critical application in the enterprise. It's the heart and soul of the enterprise. If you ask people, what would you choose, your operating system without the browser or the browser, it was clear that you know, the browser became bigger than the OS itself. The crazy thing was it was never designed as an enterprise application. Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, and other Chromium browsers became the way businesses ran. Nearly all applications became web applications. All were accessed through the browser. But these browsers weren't built for enterprises. Chrome is dictated by 5 billion end users, 5 billion consumers. It's designed for e-commerce, it's designed for advertising, etc. The original source of the browsers that we've all used for many years, the people that make them at the end of the day, they monetize off of them and they make the consumer of the product. While that's all fine and good, that's great for consumers. It's not what the enterprise needs at the end of the day. To remedy this, Enterprises have spent the last decade and billions of dollars attempting to secure the consumer browser, protect users, and enable their workforce to access work applications wherever and however they need. We all can appreciate that the browser is important to us. We all know we're in it all day long. We didn't decide this thing was ready. It was providing unique value. What are the controls? How's it going to work? None of those decisions were made because it snuck in. The current approach requires us to take a consumer browser and then layer on all sorts of technology to achieve our outcomes. All of that is extra tech, extra challenge, and most of that tech integrates in a way that has a level of abstraction to it. When you think about a breach or a cyber attack in your organization, what can you trust? This is where we're seeing a lot of the breaches don't occur from the lack of technology. Every user is their own admin. Coming into an organization with high security standards, with requirements for productivity, these are things that fight them. And that's what we got to do when we finally took the bold step of saying, what if we developed an enterprise browser? Dan Amiga, my co-founder, he saw this opportunity from his work with Chromium. If we embedded security into the browser itself, we could fundamentally change the way different parts of cybersecurity worked. I've been working in the enterprise security and IT space for about 20 years, protecting browsers against things like exploitation, phishing attacks, and in 2020, building a new browser distribution, one that's built on Chromium, delivering the enterprise functionality into that application. The Enterprise Browser is a browser built on the Chromium Open Source Project that installs on your desktop. It connects up to a management console. The management console downloads a policy and then the policy runs local. The policy governs everything that happens on the last mile if you wish it to. Copy, paste, upload, download, screenshots, data redaction, automation, from watermarking to where data is stored, to what the device has to be configured as, to literally what's presented to the user. Everything about that last mile is in control. What makes an enterprise browser special is who we're building it for. Built for security to deliver better business outcomes with the end user in mind. Improving by the way the browser handles things like cache and keystrokes and phishing and integrates into our bigger posture, but simplifying it by removing all this crazy backhaul that we built up over the years that costs us you know, a massive amount of our security budget. 
When we started designing an island and thinking about what's our roadmap in year one, year two, we're here to do three things. Dramatically improve the end user experience. Drive cost reductions for our customers. And the third, improve in all aspects of security in IT. Since coming out of stealth in 2022, Island has seen tremendous success with some of the largest hotels, airlines, and banks, along with scores of other companies betting on the enterprise browser to improve security, reduce costs, and enhance the end user experience. We've got some organizations saving hundreds of millions of dollars a year, literally removing a massive amount of spend, and, it, and it's a spend that compounds. It's not just about a more secure workspace. It's about empowering teams in all areas of the business. We went in thinking, hey, this is gonna be a great security tool. We came out of that with what is a revenue generating pool because we're able to automate things within that workflow that you would not typically be able to do. It's not just a toolkit for the end user, it's also a toolkit for the administrator, security professionals, and ultimately it's our toolkit of choice for Hendrick Motorsports. Because the browser is the critical component of almost every enterprise workflow, means enterprises can use it to solve a wide variety of challenges, including SaaS, VDI, BYOD, contractors, access, and more. Originality of use cases at the customer never ceases to amaze me. The problems we're solving, the problems they have, it's just as creative as all get out what we see. I meet one-on-one -on -one with my executives every quarter. I talk about Island because a use case comes up that only Island can solve. Customers would start with two, three, four of our modules and then they would call us back. Hey guys, can you activate this thing? Can you activate that thing? As I was showing some of these use cases, she mentioned this is an IT person's dream. I've had a CIO say this is the coolest tech they've, they've seen in 25 years. They've never seen anything better. It's just so much fun when that light bulb hits and they see what we can do. The enterprise browser's time is now. It's come. So if you can enable your employees to access data on the web through a portal that gives you control and access around how they do it, is a game changer. Virtual Desktop Infrastructure, VDI, sometimes called Desktop as a Service. Great way to put a Win32 thick client DOS application over the internet. Today, the most popular application to deliver through VDI is Chrome. So now we have enterprise grade users logging into this low resolution VDI system in the sky that takes 45 seconds. Probably the most expensive way to surf the web possible. VDI was, was a technology that was great 20 years ago when we began using it. But yet the world has evolved now we've got people that travel, canisters deployed in one region, they go to another region. You've got latency problems. You have to port people, move the compute to where people are. Customers are tired of that VDI experience and tired of that VDI cost. It's a significant burden on an enterprise to maintain and manage VDI, and it's only getting more expensive. The enterprise browser is managed through a cloud-based management console. The management console communicates policies directly to each browser within the organization. This model improves upon VDI by allowing direct, secured application access, factoring in user identity, device configurations, network connection, and geographic location. The enterprise browser also offers a layer of separation between the endpoint and the applications and data in the browser. Sensitive data is kept within enterprise applications instead of downloaded or saved to the endpoint. The compute lives locally in the browser itself. We're not dependent upon a centralized cloud in the sky where we're backhauling all your traffic. Those old school mechanics are gone. We're working with one of the largest U.S. banks and they have hundreds and hundreds of racks full of VDI to be able to support their hundreds of thousands of employees. When we start to roll it out, they can easily see that, okay, well, I can really reduce this VDI spend. For large enterprises, it can, can go up to millions. I think the aha moment for a lot of these technologists is they've been working on an endpoint. And the endpoint in their mind is a PC. You know, it's a virtual desktop in the sky. But the real endpoint is really the browser because that's what's presenting the application, that's what's presenting the data. When you get control of that last mile, everything changes. All of a sudden I can implement with ease security controls that used to be massive expensive product families that took you know, multiple admins to administer now one little click. We can start to create these application data boundaries, we call them islands, and these islands now represent where the data can flow the moment it's decrypted. Until now I've never seen a tool that gives you this much control over what is happening within a session of your browser. 
I never thought a browser would come in my security stack. We know that we're better protected than we were before Ireland. BYOD has been one of the greatest challenges for enterprises. If you give the OK for unmanaged devices, corporate data is then out of your control. But when you force installing agents, virtual desktops, or monitoring tools on personal devices, the benefit of BYOD is gone. We have a pharmaceutical company that has over 2,000 interns, and they send them a laptop with VPN. Then you could put a fantastic operations team to support them for 10 weeks, and then you try and get those machines back. Can you imagine the effort? One of our customers was shipping laptops to 53 different countries, filled with agents and filled with controls and, and GPO. And with the Island browser, they stopped. The enterprise browser strikes the perfect balance. Users just log into a browser and get to work on any device, anywhere. Yet all sensitive data stays where it belongs, since all security controls are built right into the browser. No end user headache, no CISO panic. It's the best of both worlds. When you can replace buying laptops, buying hardware with deploying a browser that's nice and comfortable, I can't think of a higher ROI in our industry. More of a BYOD approach. Leverage contractors' own devices and leveraging Island as a way to access those applications. People are working from anywhere. That does require more control, and I love the idea of using the browser as the means for doing that. Enterprise products around data management, they end up being quite heavy when you have to really roll it out to the enterprise. Now with Island, it's not that. It's probably one of the simplest technological vehicles to ever deploy in an organization because you're simply deploying a browser to a machine. You did this when you got a new computer. You downloaded Chrome from Google, and that's the first step that you do to, to download Island. That's the installation process, that's it. Talk about a bank that we, uh, we did about a year ago. As they started realizing some of the use cases and challenges they could leverage Island for, we actually asked them if they just want to run a proof of concept. This whole ability to be able to show value very quickly has been extremely compelling. It's really a browser that people are very familiar with, so that familiarity makes it very easy for the users to kind of adopt the island technology. We had this one customer that the way they used to do business with M&A, for example, right? So you buy a completely new company, you have all these new users that you don't trust. They still need access to, say, your private application. What this customer used to do is to set up VDI infrastructure within their environment and have those M&A users access these applications through that. What we say to that customer is, look, now you can just install our private access connector within your environment and everyone that has the enterprise browser can access your applications natively. When you bring on another institution, because we can push out our policies so easily and so quickly and connect them immediately, what would take them six months, they can do in a few weeks. We can ensure that all the data protection rules, all the security rules, all the visibility access rules and everything else are guaranteed without having to wait for all of our backend access. So it's been a game changer for our customers that have leveraged Island for mergers and acquisitions. The user experience of the management console is something that we're constantly getting positive feedback on. What we've built is something that's disguised as a browser on the front end. The user sees it as a very familiar experience, but on the back end, it's one of the most powerful platforms an organization will have. Right when admins walk in, there's a dashboard that provides them with content such as how many active users are leveraging Island, how many incidents Island has prevented, and the top applications that they're engaged with. It's just simple. You can run it on every device without managing complicated software. All around, our management console provides a very intuitive experience for our admins and enables them to navigate around it very easily. We really didn't have to get support involved within about two days. We had everything fully ready for our test users. We just essentially pushed Island out to everyone and it was up and rolling. The Enterprise Browser provides organizations with secure access to any app or resource on any public or private network from inside the browser itself. Existing zero-trust architecture is augmented by deep, granular last-mile controls, completing the zero-trust framework in a way that wasn't possible before. No agents, portals, or VPNs necessary, just the natural browsing experience end users know and love. An enterprise browser can help simplify zero trust uh, network access initiatives substantially. Island can provide continuous device posture assessment across 
dozens of criteria. Is it coming from a specific IP range? Is it a user? Is it a work group? Is it a specific type of device? Do you have EDR? Do you have certain certificates, etc.? So we can constantly assess the state of that device. We have one interface that we can go to that allows access on a zero trust scale. There's no risk of somebody accidentally leaving something open they weren't supposed to. Second, the ability for us to understand just the access. We can even add in and insert additional layers of access control, such as multi-factor authentication, one-time passwords, and then also the ability to provide a secure way to route traffic from the browser to internal applications without the need for a VDI or a VPN. DLP products, they have to inject themselves into the browser memory. That's really intrusive, it slows the browser down. It actually breaks as new Chromium versions uh, come into play. In Ireland, we don't take the injection approach. We actually build the browser from the ground up. If I'm an admin in the US and I'm logging into systems in the EU, you had to set up all types of infrastructure in the past and DLP rules to ensure that no data makes it to your eyeballs. We can put one rule in place that's saying, no data can leave this application. Period. You can add other rules based on your organization's needs. It just makes for management and standing up DLP in an enterprise browser so much more elegant than what we've done in the past. Some people look at Island as a cybersecurity company, others look at it as an IT company. We look at it from an end user perspective. If you're doing security right, it should be invisible. It should be the kind of thing that does not affect the mission, that doesn't introduce friction. We start with what do the customers need? We go back to the Chromium engine and we add those capabilities. When you think about you know, the impact that Island has on end users, it empowers them for not only performing their day-to-day -day job functions, but it also empowers them for their personal you know, browsing activities. When we think about a large hospitality customer with 800,000 people in 90 countries with 40 different brands, she never looked at the security, she just got the security to, uh, leader to say, is this secure? Yes, it is. Fine, I can now roll out this brand to my entire company. Our goal is to make the user experience as good or better than their current browsing experience in every single engagement. And to my knowledge, we've never failed in that promise. What we're delivering today will be a fraction of the value that we see this thing deliver over the next five to 10 years. And what we're delivering today is enough to change organizations. When you think about Island, it's not a secure browser, right? It's a central working tool in the organization. My initial reaction when I heard about uh, enterprise browsers as a game changer was, it's just a browser. Only when I saw a demo that I realized that it's a lot bigger than a browser. I've been in cyber 24 years and not one vendor has changed the cybersecurity landscape as much as Island has. It's just a browser on the endpoint, but it allows for dozens of use cases. We get off that first call and they've had the moment. They say, we want to get together with our teams and talk about it. And they come to the next, next call with 30 use cases. You see that they got it right out of the gate and they see the power of it. And the explosive power, once you get beyond that first use case, it's unlike anything I've ever seen before. Customers start to realize that whatever they see, I can control. Think about the possibilities there. It's almost endless. To me, the future of work is this wonderful destination where cybersecurity is just part of how we operate, where we've made the intelligent decisions to enable a safe and secure, but effective world. We've done so little to innovate for the end user. It's time to, to focus on them. And I think we can do that. That's the future of work. As it should be, frictionless, wherever it needs to be, and secure. All of those things matter. They're all as important as the next one. I think that's the future of Island.